cake. Ready? Say something funny. Could be something funny to say. Okay. Okay. Now time for the Naomi Nome tribute. Oh yes. Yeah. Okay, may I have your attention, please? If you please take your seats. Please take your seats. Please take your seats. The program is resuming. It's now time for us to honor some of those reporters who excelled during the past year and to look to the future to honor the high school student who we believe has the potential to set higher standards in the coming years. So to present our scholarship, here is Ann McFeeters of Scripps Howard, who is prepared to take strict measures to keep you all in your seats. So please sit down. Thank you. Well. Thank you. Only a mother can do that. <laughs> You're right. Only a mother knows how to do that. You will be quiet because at this moment, the younger generation is watching you. And you will be polite. I am here to show you the future. One of the best things the White House Correspondents Association does with your $25 a year is to fund a scholarship. You will be quiet, thank you. <laughs> One of the important things that we journalists have to do is to convince the youth of tomorrow to read us and to watch us because what we say about our country is important. With thanks to Ken Walsh and Larry McQuillan for their work on the scholarship committee, I want to introduce you to your future. A young man named Fred Bennings III. He is the winner of the White House Scholarship Committee scholars, Frank Cormier Scholarship this year. He is vice president of the senior class at Spingarn High School in the District of Columbia. He is editor-in-chief of his school newspaper. He is a graduate of the space camp at Huntsville University. He is a real go-getter. He wants to own his own electrical engineering firm someday. And the most important thing for a lot of you here is that he is interested in the news. He employs you. <laughs> Please welcome and wish a life of success for Fred Bennings III. Thank you.
Thank you, Ann. And now to present the winners of our annual scholarship awards, please welcome Terry Hunt of the Associated Press. <laughs> this part of the program is about money and recognition, and it's all well-deserved. It's my great pleasure to present the winners of the three contests administered by the White House Correspondents Association and the three contests administered by the House and Senate Press Galleries. First, the Merriman Smith Memorial Award. This is given for presidential reporting under deadline pressure. It commemorates the work of the late Merriman Smith, the longtime Chief White House Correspondent of United Press International. In the newspaper category, the winner is William Nykirk of the Chicago Tribune. <laughs> Bill won for a story written during President Clinton's trip to Europe for the 50th anniversary of D-Day. In the broadcast category, the winner is Ma Liason of National Public Radio. She won for her reporting on the president's trip to Moscow last year for a summit with Boris Yeltsin. Both winners will receive $500. The second award for White House coverage is the Aldo Beckman Award honoring the late White House correspondent and Washington bureau chief of the Chicago Tribune. This year's winner is Kathy Lewis of the Dallas Morning News. She's recognized for a collection of stories about White House coverage. They were praised as deep, analytical, informative, and sharply written. Kathy will receive $1,000. Next, we have the Edgar A. Poe Award, honoring our distinguished colleague, Mr. Poe, who is a correspondent for the New Orleans Times-Picayune and Newhouse Newspapers. The winners are Russell Carollo and Cheryl Reed of the Dayton, Ohio Daily News. They are honored for reporting on a flaw in the military justice system that allowed convicted criminals to continue receiving their pay and allowances while serving their sentences. The prize is $2,500. The judges also awarded honorable mentions to Susan Feeney and Steve McGonigal of the Dallas Morning News and to Chuck Lewis and Marcia Stepanek of Hearst Newspaper's Washington Bureau. There are more. The Raymond Clapper Memorial Awards are given in honor of a Scripps Howard War correspondent. The first prize goes to, and you've heard this name before, Susan Feeney and Steve McGonigal of the Dallas Morning News. They are honored for a story about the implementation of the Voting Rights Act. They will receive $1,500. Second place goes to Jonathan Tilov of Newhouse News Service for a story on race relations. Jonathan will receive $500. There is an honorable mention to Lee Davidson of the Desiree News. Next is the Worth Bingham Prize, given each year for reporting on situations where the public interest is ill-served. It is given in honor of journalist Worth Bingham. The prize goes to Jeff Brazil, of the Los Angeles Times for reporting on Federal Aviation Administration's decisions regarding the Boeing 757 in the wake of two fatal crashes. The award is also given to Ralph Blumenthal and Douglas France of the New York Times 
for their story on safety problems of U.S. Air. This is a good award. This award carries a $10,000 prize. An honorable mention goes to the Cleveland Plain Dealer and reporters Joel Rutchick and Timothy Hyder. Finally tonight, we have the Barnett Nover Memorial Award. It honors the late Washington Bureau Chief of the Denver Post. And tonight, we note with sorrow the death last weekend of Mr. Nover's widow, Naomi Nover. She was an enduring presence in Washington's journalism circles and was known well to many in our audience tonight. The first prize in the Nover Award goes to Jerry Seeper of the Washington Times for his Whitewater coverage. It carries a $1,500 prize. And second place goes to David Everett of the Detroit Free Press for his look at the impact of a global economy. Please give all of our award winners a well-deserved round of applause. Thank you, Terry. Before I turn the gavel over to my successor, I just wanted to make a few brief comments. First of all, to acknowledge my family in the audience tonight and friends, and to thank some people at uh, U.S. News who have made it possible for me to serve as your president, Mort Zuckerman, Merrill McLaughlin, Mike Ruby, John Walcott, for their support throughout the last year. I want to acknowledge those at the White House who worked with us so diligently to improve access, rebuild the travel office, try to hold down costs so as many news organizations as possible can cover the president when he travels, and in general help us to do our jobs better. In that regard, I want to specifically thank Mike McCurry, Press Secretary, <laughs> Dee Dee Myers, Evelyn Lieberman, a former White House staffer named David Gergen, Steve Rewertz, Ann Edwards, and of course, the President and Mrs. Clinton. When I took this job a year ago, I didn't realize the weighty issues we'd be dealing with. Vending machines whose doors would not open, asbestos in the ceiling of the briefing room, renovations of the press area that seemed to go on forever, the Internal Revenue Service collecting an excise tax for past presidential travel by the media, and bathrobes missing from an aircraft carrier. No. <coughs> None of us on the, uh, in the reporting corps had any of those bathrobes. And of course, the proposals on Capitol Hill to equate journalists with lobbyists, wrong-headed as they might have been, and another wrong-headed proposal to move the White House press corps out of the West Wing. Our association stands at an important point in our history. We are expanding our membership. We continue to reach out to the community through our scholarship program. And we have worked with many of you here tonight and with the White House to improve access to the president and the senior staff. We have, I hope, reduced some of the unnecessary misunderstandings and frictions that too often characterize the relationship between the media and the White House in the past. We're now giving our ideas to the National Park Service as it develops a design plan for the use of the White House over the next 20 years. And we hope we'll welcome your suggestions and ideas. With your help and support, the association will continue to evolve into an even more effective voice for the White House Press Corps. I want to tell you how honored I am to have been your president for the last year. And now to tell you what the next year will bring, I'd like to introduce my successor, Carl Lubsdorf of the Dallas Morning News. Thank you. Thanks very much, Ken. When I thought of what I would say here tonight, I was reminded of a story about a woman who heard a knock on her door one day and found a pollster there. And the pollster asked her several questions about the issues of the day and then asked who she was going to vote for. Oh, she said, I never vote. It only encourages them. <laughs> for the last 25 years, I've spent most of my time covering 
presidents of the United States who were trying to get that woman's vote and presidential candidates. I was with Richard Nixon the night he was stoned in San Jose. For those who don't go back that far, a group of demonstrators threw rocks at him. I was with Jimmy Carter. I was with Jimmy Carter the day we learned he had lust in his heart. And I wrote the story that prompted George McGovern to say he was 1,000% behind Thomas Eagleton. With that record, Mr. President, you probably hope I spend most of next year with the Republicans. I'm here tonight as the fourth elected president of this association, in large part because some of our colleagues decided six years ago that the White House reporters needed a more active organization to represent their interests and set about to bring it about. In that regard, I'd like to mention three people who made major contributions at that time. Owen Ullman, then of Knight Ritter, and now with Business Week, who really started the effort. Johanna Newman of USA Today, who as the association's president gave crucial support to the effort. And our dear friend, the late Jerry Watson of the Chicago Sun-Times. Long before Bill Clinton and Al Gore even thought about reinventing government, these three helped this association to reinvent itself. Ever since, in addition to sponsoring this dinner, as Ken noted, we've worked on other issues. We've sought to expand access to the president, to improve working conditions for the press corps, and to get a handle on the increased costs that threaten the ability of many organizations to travel with the president. Throughout this administration, we have faced and met some serious challenges. We have made some progress in recent weeks in trying to head off the determination of some wrong-headed bureaucrats who thought they would help us out by moving us out of the West Wing of the White House. We even hope that we can do something in the short time on, on telephone costs, which has been one of our biggest problems. The good news as Ken indicated, I hear the applause of a bureau chief somewhere in the hall. The good news, as Ken indicated, is that relations between the White House Press Corps and the White House Press Office are better than they have been for some time. This is largely due to the efforts of Press Secretary Mike McCurry and to the attitude he has instilled in his deputies, Mary Ellen Glynn, Evelyn Lieberman, and Ginny Terzano, and in the rest of the staff. Thanks to Mike's leadership and Evelyn's efforts, for the first time, we are having serious talks with the White House about forging a cooperative relationship. I hope that over the next year we can take some steps that recognize that problems involving the press corps and the White House require joint solutions in which each exercises some authority. We also expect to continue our efforts to increase access to the President and to his top advisors especially for reporters who regularly cover the White House. These will be my major goals as the association's new president. And now I'd like to conclude by presenting to my predecessor, Ken Walsh, the gavel in recognition of the excellent job he's done over the last year in leading this association. Thanks very much. Thank you, Carl. It's now the time in our program when we turn to our entertainer. Born in Brookline, Massachusetts, he is one of six children and a graduate of Harvard University, where he was twice elected president of the Harvard Lampoon. He has been called one of the most innovative and creative minds in television, a man who won an Emmy Award in 1989 for his work as a writer on Saturday Night Live, who was a former writer and supervising editor for the TV series The Simpsons, who succeeded David Letterman on NBC late night talk show, and whose own late, late late night talk show is always full of surprises, and who promises a few surprises for us tonight. Please welcome Conan O'Brien.
Thank you, uh, Ken Walsh, Mr. President, Mrs. Clinton, members of the White House Correspondence Board, members of the Association, Tom Selleck. <laughs> Big fan, hi. How are you? <laughs> He's here. It's, uh, it's a real thrill to be here. Um, I want to say there is uh, actually nothing more inspiring than watching the peaceful transition of power from one White House <laughs> Correspondents Association president to another. I, uh... I'm okay now. I'm all right. Before I begin, I have a few announcements to make that uh, Ken Walsh has asked me to make. Uh, bear with me. The first announcement is for the Democratic congressman present. Please refrain from switching parties during the dinner. <laughs> it's very confusing to your waiter, all right? I understand Nathan Deal got the same dessert twice. We gotta work that out. I have good news, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's event is sold out. And that's right, according to Ken Walsh, there are 2,700 people present. Though I uh, understand Michael Huffington wishes to dispute that number. We'll, uh... <laughs> We'll get you the total, sir, free of charge, I promise. Won't be a problem there. Quick announcement here. Will the person with the Washington license plate number GH733 please see Bob Dornan immediately after the dinner? He hasn't offended you yet. <laughs> Just trying to be thorough. Finally, I have an announcement for those of you watching tonight's event live on C-SPAN. For God's sake, it's Saturday night. <laughs> things you can do. I want to say, though, I am, uh, <laughs> higher ratings than mine. <laughs> I'm, uh, I am very honored, uh, honored to be a part of this event tonight, though. When I got the invitation, I was thrilled that I'd be speaking in the same room with the most powerful man in the country. And, uh, well, then I heard Judge Ito canceled. Uh, but you move on, is the point that I'm making. You accept it and you move on. I wasn't aware that, um, this is true I hear, when, uh, when you attend a function with the president, that the Secret Service puts you through an extensive background check. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little embarrassing, actually. It uh, turns out, technically, I'm still a virgin. But uh, <coughs> don't even know what that means. It's not all bad, though. The Secret Service also checked out uh, my parents who were here, and uh, now my dad is on the short list for Surgeon General. So, uh, <laughs> congratulations, Dad. You should meet him. He's very good. He'll do a good job. <laughs> I should uh, probably tell you something about myself. I, I am a talk show host. <laughs> You know, folks, I, I remember I was really excited to get my own talk show. And then I found out Roger Ailes had one. <laughs> Come on, folks, what's next? Cooking with Ira Magaziner? <laughs> 6,000 ingredient veal piccata. <laughs> Tuna casserole made difficult. It's a great show, check it out. For those of you who don't know, I, I met the president, you'll verify this, I met the president once before, he had a big St. Patrick's Day dinner at the White House, and he invited all the prominent Irish Americans. Um, no, really, all the prominent Irish Americans were there. Uh, Jerry Cooney was there. <laughs> the Lucky Charms Leprechaun was there. The woman who says, manly yes, but I like it too. <laughs> And a drinking buddy of Ray Flynn's. So, great guy, too. We did shots. All right. But then again, folks, that was a very quick trip to Washington I took a year ago. I really don't know Washington. I'm a bit of an outsider. Um, I've really, actually, I've never really seen, uh, seen this great city. So early this morning, this is true, I, uh, I left the hotel and I walked all around the city. 
And I'll tell you, a chill went up my spine. I mean, it occurred to me that I was walking the same streets as Jefferson, Madison, Lincoln, Bono. <laughs> I, uh... I'm not over it yet. Fun trivia fact for, you, uh, for those of you uh, who are interested. I, I am, I was a history uh, major and uh, just I'm going to tell you this right now. Uh, I have a little fun trivia fact for all of you. Washington was not the original capital of the United States. Did you know that? It's true. Yeah, New York. This is true. New York was the original capital. That is so sad. No, New York was the original capital. Apparently, they decided to move the capital when, during George Washington's inaugural address, someone shouted out, Hey, buddy, nice wig. <laughs> now, I'm just telling you stuff you should know. That's my job here. I, I got up early this morning, though I did walk around, and I, uh, I went and I decided, for inspiration, I would visit the Jefferson Memorial. You ever done that? Everyone goes to the Lincoln Memorial. You know, no one ever, for inspiration, goes to the Jefferson Memorial. So I went to the Jefferson Memorial, and I was very inspired, because carved in the beautiful marble on the walls of the Jefferson Memorial are some really inspiring sayings. Uh, listen to this. First one uh, at the top. I have sworn upon the altar of God eternal hostility against every form of tyranny over the mind of man. And then just below that, I know but one code of morality for men, whether acting singly or collectively. And then way down at the bottom, carved in marble, it says, P.S. If there's ever a movie about me, please don't cast Nick Nolte. <laughs> it was probably the most moving experience of my life. <laughs> but let's, uh, is he here? No. <laughs> I, um, for this speech, I'm an outsider. I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. I live in New York. And I really wanted to get inside the beltway for this. I wanted to get, for this speech, I wanted to get into the same mindset as most of you people in Washington. I did. So right now, I would like to announce that I am a Republican candidate for president. Thank you very much. See me on the way out. Our donations. I actually, I actually went to Senator Byrd for advice on my speech you know, get a little advice, and he said, keep it to 14 hours. <laughs> said, after that, you start to lose them. But I am serious. I wanted to get plugged in for this. I'm not plugged in to Washington. I wanted to get plugged in, so I've actually been watching the Sunday morning Washington shows very diligently for the last couple of weeks. I watched Brinkley's show with Sam Donaldson, uh, who I understand is in big trouble for accepting uh, $50,000 in farm subsidies. Yeah. No, I, I guess that thing on his head is technically a farm. I didn't... No one told me. I didn't know. Don't turn on me, ladies and gentlemen. Don't turn on me. It was either me tonight or Al D'Amato doing impressions, all right? Stick with this, okay? Hi there. I like your work, yeah. Now, another Washington show that I've been watching a lot is uh, Larry King Live. I've been watching that a lot lately. Larry's here, I understand. That's great promotion. Yeah, I've been watching Larry King Live. Now, it's interesting. Larry just got married to his fifth or his seventh wife. Yeah. Now, no one actually, this is the most interesting thing, no one knows her full name because he just refers to her as Melanie from Overland Park, Kansas. <laughs> Not worth the crappy impression. All right, now all kidding aside though, I am very impressed, I am very impressed. I wanna be sincere here, I'm very impressed with the fourth estate in this country, I really am. And uh, I think, I really do think the press should be applauded for finally shifting focus from Mrs. Clinton's hairstyle to Marsha Clark's. I think you, you people, don't you agree? It was time. It was time. The big story, though, ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to be an, I'm an outsider, let's face it. You know, I don't know much. But you don't have to know much. No, the big story here 
is the 96 presidential race. That's the big, it's starting to heat up, it's starting to get going, and uh, Bob Dole is a big story, right? Bob Dole just announced pretty recently, and it's very interesting, because uh, I understand I read in the paper about two weeks ago, Bob Dole announced he will not bring up the issue of President Clinton's war record during the campaign. Yeah. Yeah, he went on to promise he will make this announcement every day until the campaign <laughs> is over. <laughs> huh? I know the man, yes, he's been on my show. If I can get Tom Selleck, I'm <laughs> we'll talk after the dinner. <laughs> You're doing it Wednesday. <laughs> um, Senator Dole, I understand, is unhappy with Phil Graham for entering the race. Yeah, I, I guess... Uh, I guess he thought he had the surly old guy vote wrapped up. <laughs> this is disappointing news for him. You understand. Pat Buchanan is also in the race. And this is, I thought this was interesting. When Pat Buchanan announced his candidacy, some people, this is kind of ugly, some people ran onto the stage carrying signs that read, Pat Buchanan is a racist. A and those were his supporters. I mean... <laughs> I can always work at the Gap. All right. <laughs> Corduroy section, yeah. I'll be there. Newt Gingrich, apparently. Though Newt Gingrich is, uh, is one of the biggest stories. I know he is not a candidate uh, for the 96th race, but he's one of the biggest stories, even for an outsider like me. And uh, this is a true story that gives you some idea of, of Newt Gingrich's popularity. A company, this is true, a company is manufacturing underwear with Newt Gingrich's face on it. That's true. Yeah, now, someone told the president this, and he said, hey, it's nothing to me, he's been on my butt for two years. <laughs> and, uh... That's a quote, that was in the Times. I read that in the Times. The source is here. Now, I'm not an expert on politics, and I'm not an expert on the contract with America, but I understand one part of the contract that didn't pass is term limits. Right? Yeah, term limits didn't pass. Now, it's interesting. I went and I looked it up. Term limits were first proposed by Strom Thurmond in 1910. And you should know the history of this stuff if you're from Washington. Now, I move on to President Clinton. And I'm going to say something very briefly in the, in the vein of the 96 race. Some people... Some people say the president is going to have a tough race in 96. Um, some say it's not going to be easy, it's going to be an uphill struggle. Well, I speak for the 30 and under generation. And Mr. President, I want you to know, you don't have to worry about us, because we don't vote. <laughs> I just invoked the president here. Um, the fact is, and uh, for those of you who have seen my show before, and there are nine, uh, <laughs> I have a special relationship with the president. Uh, the president has actually appeared on my show, not just once, but many, many times he's appeared on my show. And uh, he's been a frequent guest, and he's allowed me to interview him. And uh, he's actually agreed. This is the first time, ladies and gentlemen, that this has happened in the 81 years of these dinners, the first time that the president has actually allowed the comedian to interview him live right here at the dinner. So ladies and gentlemen, please give a nice big hand to the president of the United States, President Clinton. Give him a hand. Hey, how y'all doing? Come on, give it up. Give it up, I am the president. All right. Now, they well, got a clap. I love it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, welcome, sir. Uh, how are you? How are oh, you doing? Oh, I'm feeling good, Conan. I'm feeling relevant. Real relevant. <laughs> good for you, sir. Good for you. Now, <laughs> I think that... That's good for you, sir. Very good for you. What do you got for me, baby? Uh, 
No, no, no. Oh, it's I, good I, for America, man. Yeah. It's good for America. I believe, I believe this country can look forward to two years of relevant leadership. I really do. Hey, Paul Begala gave me that line. You like it? Yeah, it's great. It's going to be my campaign slogan. Clinton in 96. He's extra relevant. Yeah, that's... Now, now I'm sorry, Mr. President. Mr. Yeah. Mr. President, I don't know much, but this all sounds like a very bad idea. I'm sorry. Yes, it does. I had to let Paul go today. Yeah. Man, they're dropping like flies around here. Yeah, well... Well, listen, Mr. President, it's very good to see you again. Yeah, hey, hey, Conan, I remember meeting you at that St. Patrick's Day dinner. I remember that. Yeah. You were standing between the potato salad and the Yankee pot roast. Yeah. No, I, I actually, I don't remember that, but it was a fun dinner, yeah. That was good potato salad, man. Yeah. It was. Man, that was good. I took it home. Yeah. Finished it in bed. Yeah, oh, I'm fine, fine. Hey, by the way, Conan, did you like the, uh, today's dinner, the halibut with the little baby carrots? Yeah. That was my idea. Really? It really? was my I idea, I'm that. telling you. The, I'll Your tell idea? you, the Republicans will try to take credit for that, but I'm oh. telling you, it was my idea. Damn them. I mean, I've been talking about baby Damn carrots yeah, since 1992. Right, right. Now, now, terrific. Look, Mr. President, before we go any further, I think we need to clear something up. If I'm talking to you here on the screen, All right. who is this gentleman right here? I don't understand. Uh, ho yeah, uh, well, that's my stand-in. Yeah, yeah, that's Kevin. Give him a hand. Kevin. Yeah, Kevin. He's great. He doesn't quite have the voice down, but he's getting it. Kevin's yeah. been my stand-in for the last, uh, year and a half. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Really, he's, he's been yeah, standing yeah, in for a year Yeah, yeah, he's the guy half. who messed up health care. All right, me. Mr. President. <laughs> I've been doing other stuff. All right, well, blame it on Kevin then. Fine. All right. Oh, man, I see. Now, uh, Now, where are you? If, if, if Kevin is here now, right. where are you at this moment? I don't well, understand. All right. I, I'm, uh, right now, I'm over at the House of Representatives. I'm, uh -huh. I'm still making my State of the Union speech. Oh. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of quiet here, but I'm coming up to a big finish. Yeah, that's, that's really I'll great. Good for you. Good Thanks. for you. That's great. CBS is covering it. Yeah. You can catch it any time. They're real happy with the ratings. It's yeah, beating, I'm sure uh, they Rescue are. Yeah. One One and Walker, Texas Rangers. Now, sir, that brings up something. You do seem to be having some trouble getting television time. Well, hey, man, we're on TV now. <laughs> yeah, but, Mr. President, we're on C-SPAN. C-SPAN? Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like a tree in the forest, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Say no more, you know. C-SPAN. That hurts. Oh, well. Oh, well, if no one's watching, uh... Hey, everybody, I inhaled! Yeah. I smoked my brains out. They used to call me Weed Willie. That's fine, sir. That's fine, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Now, listen, sir. Sir, please. I want to help you Ooh, here. That was fun. Now, come on. Kevin's losing it here. Sir? That was fun, sir, but you know, you need, uh, what you need to do, and I want to help you, is you need to get your message out. What message? <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I mean, I mean, you know it, Conan, my message. Yeah. School lunches. Oh. Yeah! Wait, wait. That's the message? Hey, I'm working on it, man. Back off. All right. I'm very sorry, sir, but I, I gotta say, though, things are really looking up for you right now. You bet now. they're they really looking are. up. I'm relevant. Yeah. School lunches. Yeah. yeah, that school lunch is terrific. But actually, sir, things aren't so bad. Your approval rating is up. Yes, it and is. A lot of, yeah, it's up right now. And a lot of people say uh, that that's because you've been keeping a low profile. Is that true? That's right, baby. I'm laying low. <laughs> Playing it cool. Very nice, yeah. Playing it cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm laying low. Getting a lot, I'm getting a lot of stuff done people don't even know about. That's right. Really? Uh, expand on that. What do you mean? That's right, man. Like, like Michael Jordan coming back? That's me. <laughs> That's me. Really? Wait. This is important. Points the other Wait, night. you did that? What else did you do? Well, uh, you know that new pizza with the cheese in the crust? <laughs> That's mine. I got that done. 
Wow, I gotta say, that is, that is very impressive. That yeah, yeah. See, Conan, the president, the press, the press doesn't report all this good stuff. I mean, yeah. they, don't, they don't want you to hear about the pizza. They got their own agendas. They're, man, they're a bunch of lowlifes. Um, Mr. President, I should probably mention this. Uh, we're at the White House Press Correspondents' Dinner right now. What? Yeah, the Correspondents' Dinner. I mean, everybody from the press is here. Right. <laughs> Are you there, press? <laughs> nice pressy. <laughs> good, good press. Good First Amendment. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's uh, here. Hey, hey, everybody, drink up. Yeah. <laughs> We're just kidding around here. <laughs> yeah. Just having yeah. fun. Everybody's here. Yeah. Uh, actually, a uh, Brit Hume is here. Uh oh. Who else? Well, uh, Eleanor Cliff is here. Mm, I can handle her. <laughs> I got her in my pocket. Yeah. Yeah. Who else? Hey, come on, he said, he said it. He said it. Who else is here? Yeah, uh, well, I, yeah, all right. Well, who else? Well, actually, yeah. David Brock, Joe Klein, and Bob Novak are sitting at one all table. Right. All right. Conan, you are seriously killing my buzz. All right, okay. Very sorry, sir. I didn't well, mean to do that. Are there any, here. Yeah, that's fine. Are there any other secret achievements that we should know about here? Oh, yes. Conan, Conan, just last week, I narrowly averted a professional tennis strike. That's right. I really? I, I, I never even heard about that. I don't, I don't think anyone did. Yeah. Laying low. Playing it cool. Yeah. You say that nicely, yeah. Yeah. I guess I understand you've also got other good news. Robert McNamara's book just came out saying Vietnam was a mistake. That's and right. I, I guess now your, your war record is no longer an issue. That's right. I'm vindicated. That's right. It was a bad war, and I chose not to serve. Okay. It was the right thing to do. Okay. Okay, that's great. No, I guess it that's was. That's right. Instead, I chose to go to Russia and party with communists. It was the right thing to do. No. No, I, I guess it was, yeah. I lay nude on the rooftop of the Kremlin oh, and okay. got high with a very young Willie Nelson. Oh, please, you did it not. It was the right thing to do. Yeah, I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. Well, listen, sir, the elections are coming up. The elections are coming up. Let's assess your record a bit. Move on, okay? You had, some, right. big, you had some big victories like NAFTA. NAFTA. Woo! Love it. Yeah. That's right. You know, I came up with the slogan for that one. Vote for NAFTA, party after. Yeehaw! That was great. That's a great slogan. Now, are you happy with how Oops. NAFTA is progressing? <laughs> oh, yeah. Conan, we're only beginning to see the effects of NAFTA. Mm -hmm. For one thing, NAFTA will make Mexican food more accessible to the United States. <laughs> That's right. Important foods like burritos, enchiladas, cannoli. I'm, I'm sorry. That's right. I'm sorry, Mr. President. Cannoli, that, that's Italian. Really? Well, I like them. Yeah, I'm... <laughs> I have heard that, yes. Well, all right, moving on. The crime bill. The crime bill was a very right. important achievement for you in the first two years. But do you think, some people think you made too many compromises with the Republicans. No way, man. I didn't budge one bit on that thing. So you're tough on crime. Oh, yeah, that's me. I'm tough. Look out, crime. I'm gonna get you. Yeah, yeah. So, it, so it's still packed? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Don't I'm get saucy crime. on me. All right. So the crime bill is still uh, tough. Uh, is still packed oh, yeah. with with tough policies. Hey, read the bill, man. Page seventy-four. If you rob a bank, you cannot open an account at that branch. <laughs> huh? I don't know. I think that's good. That's right. I'm all right with that. Are you? Uh... And uh, and and you're satisfied with the gun control compromises? Hey, yeah. Page 42, if you bring a gun on a plane, you must store it in the overhead compartment. Yeah, that's, that's very impressive. That's very and good. And if the Republicans try to roll that back, I will take my pen and I will veto it. All right, that's good, sir. All right. Now, you talk tough, but the fact is you did make a lot of compromises and promises just to get those bills passed. Well, yeah, I mean, that's politics, man. I, I guess I made a few promises. Uh, I got to drive uh, Pete Domenici's kid to school every day. Uh, mm -hmm. Senator Dole has the use of the presidential seal for the rest of my term. Mm -hmm. 
I'll be using the seal of the AAA Automotive Club. Yeah, okay. All right, fair enough. All right, well, and of course, you've been uh, criticized for lacking expertise in foreign policy. We can't forget the peace treaties, though, with Israel, the Palestinians, and Jordan. That was <laughs> We did it! Yeah, yeah. We did it! Yeah, well, but, but do you think the treaty with Jordan will hold up? And, and what role will the Syrians really play? We did it! We did it! Yeah. All right, well, let me ask you this. Was it more difficult getting Jordan on board? Oh, no, man. Uh, I just told him I, I got Prime Minister Rabin, and I told him that Prime Minister Hussein wants peace, and... Uh, uh, actually, got... actually, sir, I'm sorry to stop you, but it's, it's King Hussein. He's a king? Yeah, yeah, he is, yeah. Cool. <laughs> well, I guess a success is a success. You bet it, man. Yeah. School lunches. Relevant. Yeah, that's right. Vindicated. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. Stop that. I'll tell you what, though. Yes? I couldn't have done it without my right-hand man. That's right. My number two guy. I'd like to bring him out, if you don't mind. Can I bring him out? Yeah, sure. Say? I don't see any problem with that. Bring out your number two guy. All right, let's go, man. Come on out here, baby. Yeah! Hey, hey, hey. Yeah! All right, now. There he is. Hey, number hey. two. All right, now. Woo! Listen, listen. Yeah! Hey, hey. Now, listen. Settle down. Settle down, both of you. Now, Mr. Carter. Mr. Carter, first of all. <laughs> that is so scary. Uh, Mr. Carter, first of all, congratulations. Congratulations on all your achievements in this administration. Thanks, Conan. I'll continue to do my part. Yeah. It ain't it great, man? It's like having a second president. He does all the work, I have all the fun. Yeah, that's, a, that's a very sweet deal. Yeah, very sweet deal. Man, you know it. This old cracker's been cleaning up all my messes. Oh. Really? So, so Mr. Carter has been working on other things for you? I That's right. Know. Oh, yeah, man. Right now, I got Jimmy reconfiguring my real estate records. Oh. Oh. I'm just happy to pitch in and hopefully erase the disgrace of my four years in office. I still am a disgrace, right? You bet you're a disgrace, Cracker Boy! Oh, now, now where's my laundry? It's still in the spin cycle, Mr. President. It'll be approximately 19 minutes before it's completely dry. <laughs> Right to both of them, President. Uh, Warm, Clinton clean and, socks. And, that's great. Thank you. Good night, both of you. Clinton and Carter. Thank you. Man, give them a hand. They deserve it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's that's pretty much it for me. Uh, one thing. I love you too. Yes. One thing, though, that I, uh, I, I, I did want to do before the evening was over is I wanted to say, uh, it's, it, look at this room we have here right now tonight. We have, we have liberals and we have conservatives. We have politicians. We have the press. We have the young. We have the old. And tonight, really, what I wanted to end with was I thought it would be great if I could say one thing that all of us could get behind as a people. You know, one statement that we could all get behind, understand, and move on with. And I think I have it, ladies and gentlemen. Bob Dornan cannot be president. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you, Conan. It's now my pleasure to turn to the man this dinner is designed to honor. In its 81 years, the White House Correspondents Association has had but one toast. Please join me in that toast now to the President of the United States. And now, ladies and gentlemen, President Clinton. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ken. To all the members of the White House press who are here, to all the members of the White House staff and the administration who are here and who have to endure this every year with me. <laughs> Let me say I have had a, a wonderful time tonight. I kind of hate to come up here. I'd, I'd rather listen to Conan talk to that worthless redneck on the screen <laughs> <laughs> for another half an hour. I uh, <laughs> identify with Conan O'Brien. Like me, he's a young man who came from obscurity and uh, chose a sidekick with more inside experience. And despite his many accomplishments, 250 million Americans never get to see him in prime time. <laughs> I feel your pain. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> Speaking of young people, it was announced tonight, you know, that, that my press secretary, Mike McCurry, and his wife, Deborah, just had their third child, Christopher. Uh, I want to make another announcement. Uh, before my term is in over, Christopher will become the youngest member of the White House press office, <laughs> just barely younger than the rest who work there. You know, I practiced for this night. I had all this humor and everything, but, and I really believe it. You could tell I, I really liked that, uh, whoever that awful person is that played me. <laughs> I thought it was wonderful. The, uh, the book of Proverbs says, A happy heart doeth good like medicine, and a broken spirit drieth the bones, and I believe that. Uh, but I think you will all understand that, and I hope my wonderful comedy writers will understand if I, I take a few moments tonight uh, not to be too funny here at the end because of uh, the tragedy in Oklahoma City which has captured us all and which still is the focus of our efforts for understandable reasons tonight as the rescue workers are still laboring and as the uh, law enforcement officers are still working uh, tonight and Ken and I were sitting here and he let me read his latest essay about the heroism of the people in Oklahoma City. And, and I want to say something personal to all of you. I know that for virtually everybody in the press in this room, uh, this has been a very painful experience for all of you, too, to have covered it and to have been Americans, to have been parents and children and brothers and sisters, and to have identified with the human tragedy on such a massive scale. And what I want to do tonight is to tell you that uh, I really appreciate the way this incident has been presented to the American people. I think you have made an extraordinary effort to capture both the horror and the humanity of the situation, to somehow grasp and communicate to your fellow citizens the incredible honor with which so many people have performed in these last difficult days. Most of you were able and I think it was difficult to show commendable restraint and not jumping to any conclusions about who did this terrible thing. And most of you have really done a great deal to help the American people find some renewed strength and energy. And I thank you for that. And I hope in the days ahead you will be able to continue it. As this story unfolds, I, I would ask you to continue to return to Oklahoma City to update our country on how the families who have suffered so much are rebuilding their lives, and to remind us about the countless heroes we have all seen there. The terrible people who did this thing do not deserve to be celebrities, although they will become famous. But the victims and their families and the people who have labored, they don't deserve to be forgotten. The heroes of this tragedy embody the unbreakable spirit of our nation. They should always be remembered. The hundreds of rescue workers who defied the rain, the cold, the heartache, and a very real risk to their own lives. 
People like Rebecca Anderson, a nurse with four children whose parents still live in my home state, who was hit by a piece of concrete and later died trying to help others. Even in death, she continued to serve the living by giving her heart to save the life of a man from Oklahoma and one of her kidneys to save the life of a woman from New Mexico. Now, folks, that is the real America. Sometimes all of us forget it a little bit. Sometimes all of us are too bound up in what we are doing. But this country is bound together in a way that the people like those who committed those crimes in Oklahoma can never understand. And I know our government is not perfect, and I know it makes mistakes. But this is a very free country and a very great country. And a lot of the people who are out there complaining about it today would not even be able to do what they do in the way they do it in most of the other democracies in the world today. And we should never forget it. I say this tonight not to pour cold water on this wonderful evening and not because I haven't enjoyed it. I think I laughed harder tonight than anybody else here. But because as long as this work is going on, I think I owe it to you to tell you for all of our uh, sometimes conflicting interests, I am really proud of the work the American Press Corps did in bringing this to the American people. And the work is not over. The understanding is not over. We have a lot of difficult decisions to make in the weeks and months ahead. As you know, I feel very strongly that the country should adopt stronger measures against terrorism. It will be debated in the Congress. Some of the measures are complex. You will have to explain them to the American people. I ask only that in all of this, you never forget the human dimension that you have so skillfully and heroically brought home to all the people of this country. We are going to get through this, and when we do, we'll be even stronger. We've been around here now for more than 200 years because almost all the time, more than half of us wind up somehow doing the right thing. And we will do the right thing again. I'd like to close with words written by the wonderful poet W.H. Auden over 50 years ago. In the deserts of the heart, let the healing fountain start. In the prison of his days, teach the free man how to praise. We praise America tonight, and we thank you for bringing it home to us in such a powerful way in these last days. Good night, and God bless you all. Thank you, Mr. President. Before asking you to adjourn to the receptions being sponsored tonight by various news organizations, I just want to thank a couple of people who worked so hard to make this dinner a success. To Julie Hurd, our dinner director and her staff, this dinner is a vast undertaking and Julie makes it look easy. To Rebecca Krantz of the Hilton staff, who's made everything run so smoothly, and to Dick Schmidt, our counsel, who helped us work through some important legal issues during the year. Now I'd like to ask you to all re uh, remain standing while Carl Lubsdorf, our incoming president, and Terry Hunt, our new vice president, escort Mr. Uh, president Clinton and Mrs. Clinton out of the ballroom. We thank them for attending the dinner. We thank you all for coming tonight, and we'll see you all next year.
good.